Auckland went into a level three lockdown due to the community transmission of the COVID-19 virus, it threw all the scheduled outdoor sporting events into chaos. The Mickey Thompson New Zealand Stadium off-road championship included. The on again, off again lead up, making it hard for many to make round two. But with an 11th hour reprieve and Auckland back at level one come race morning, it was all on again. The best in the country tested themselves and their machinery around the Manukau International Off-Road Stadium course here at Collendale Park. At stake, the New Zealand Stadium Off-Road Championships. Well, quite a lot of work being done behind the scenes here for the Mickey Thompson New Zealand Stadium Off-Road Championship round number two. The big difference you'll notice straight away, no dust on the racetrack, a lot more preparation with uh, Kevin Hall and his team doing an amazing job. First race we'll show you will be the Federal Tyres Pro 1 class and that will feature this man, Tony McCall, part of the Brains Trust behind this amazing event. So it will be a rolling start and on pole position it will be number 113 Mark Brown alongside him Tony McCall. In the second row it'll be Brad Harvey and Justin Davies and in row number six it'll be Tony Atwood and James Buchanan. They are set to go we get the green flag and away we go and it's a good start for the 157 of Tony McCall as he will lead them into the Lucas Oils hairpin for the first time. Oh a little bit of contact there looked like it was the uh, Mark Brown car and also Justin Davies are on board here with Justin Davies so he's got away with this, although he's got a little bit of ground to make up. Meantime, back on board Davies as he works his way down into the uh, the back section of the circuit, if you like. It's a, uh, a game of two halves. It's fast at the top end of the circuit, but then down into the switchbacks, it gets very, very challenging indeed. 157, Tony McCall out in the front. The Lucas Oils, Mickey Thompson, Pro 1. He's a uh, five-time overall O-Range champion, many times a class champion. And as I said, one of the driving forces behind this event. And he's completely in control of this one as he works his way up over the uh, pit jump and heads down the long front straight. Second place is Brad Harvey. There he is in the um, 2.4 fuel injected car. And look at this battle going on behind. Justin Davies running a little bit of a rear guard action. His next victim will be the uh, 197 of Tony Atwood. You're on board here with Davies. There's the Boomac racing car of uh, Buchanan just ahead of this little bunch as they cross the stripe with three to go. Davies gets up the inside as they head towards the Mickey Thompson tabletop and gets into the front running. So battles within battles here at Collendale Park. This is round two of the Mickey Thompson New Zealand Stadium Off-Road Championship. You're riding with Justin Davies. Just in behind him at the moment. This is Tony Atwood, number 197. This is a battle for fourth and fifth on your screen. Race leader continues to be the 157, and that is uh, Tony McCall. Working their way through the switchbacks now is uh, Atwood making his first appearance here at the Mickey Thompson New Zealand Stadium Off-Road Championship. This is round number two. There's all sorts of doubt that it would never happen with the COVID-19 emergency that we had here in Auckland when we went back to level three. Up and over the big front straight jump goes Tony McCall. There is the man in second place and this is Brad Harvey. This is the two-man structures. 2.4 litre uh, fuel injected powered buggy. In third place, it would be James Buchanan, another one making his debut here as we ride or we uh, follow Tony McCall, heading down into the switchbacks once again. Heat races five laps, a semi-main, it'll be a little bit longer than that. You're on board here with McCall. Well, if he can continue his good form from uh, the first round of the Off-Road Stadium Series, he can maybe pick up his 24th class win in O-Rans uh, competition. He's a five-time overall O-Rans champion, but 24 class wins would take a lot of beating. Tony McCall is the man of the moment as he works towards the pit jump once again. That happened pretty quickly when you're doing close to 100 miles an hour as you head down into the Mickey Thompson uh, main straight jump. The concrete treatment stepper over the top they go. Lots of uh, air for McCall, the Lucas Oil, Mickey Thompson, BSL Pro 1. The Pro 1 racing brought to you by Federal Tyres. If anything, it looks like Harvey getting a little bit closer. 
Well, I guess McCall can afford to cruise just a little bit. The laps wind down here. Heat number one for the Federal Tires Pro Ones. It's McCall in the front. It is Harvey in second place. This is the man currently sitting back in fourth place. This is Justin Davies. You're on board with him once again. Remember he had that contact early on with uh, Mark Brown. That was in lap number one. So it's been a bit of a fight back from young Davies, a second generation driver. Currently sitting in fourth. Just ahead of him, it is um, James Buchanan in the BUMAC Racing number 165. As Davies comes up over the Mickey Thompson tabletop and down into the 180 degree right hander and now into the switchbacks. The NJ Wood excavator's uh, car. Tony McCall though flashes across the line with one lap to go. He's got this on a string at the moment. Has McCall put in such a lot of work behind the scenes to make this event a reality. Remember this is round two of the Mickey Thompson New Zealand Stadium Off-Road Championship. And of course we've uh, had to postpone the uh, event one week because of the COVID-19 situation here in the Queen City. Number 165, this is Spumac Racing. Oh, just getting way sideways coming over the tabletop. That's James Buchanan. James making his debut here at Manukau uh, for round two. Been told we go back to the front of the field and he's just cruising now is Tony McCall. You're back on board with him here but you can see for yourself these drivers with all the suspension in the world, all the power in the world still get a fair beating inside the cabin. You're wondering what that box is on the side of Tony McCall's helmet. That is the electronic tear-off device as he works his way down towards the uh, chequered flag last lap for McCall. He's been dominant in this one. Chequered flag comes out, he gets there. In second place, it will be Brad Harvey. And in third place, a distant third, albeit, it'll be James Buchanan in the Boomac Racing. But it's all about this man. Here is the uh, 165 of Buchanan. And in fourth place, it'll be the 196. And you ride with him here as he takes on the Mickey Thompson jump and the finish line. That is Justin Davies. So officially it is McCall drawing first blood here at Collindale Park. Brad Harvey comes through in second place. Then it was Buchanan, Davies, Atwood, and Mark Brown sadly is a DNF after contact in round one. Here we are looking at the highlights here. This is what I was talking about before. Brown just looked like he turned hard right, and unfortunately Davies had nowhere to go. We've got the best seat in the house here as Justin Davies makes a bit of contact with uh, Brown, and that was it for Mark Brown. This is some highlights from heat number two. You're watching the man again, Tony McCall. Have a look at this as he comes up to the Mickey Thompson tabletop, goes from third to first place, displaces Harvey back into second, in fact passed him in mid-air and already has pulled out a bit of an advantage as they go over the pit stump and head down the main straight once again. Number 157, McCall and he's got it wrong! Oh and he's rolled over the Lucasaurs, Mickey Thompson buggy and he keeps on going, I don't think he missed a step. It was enough though to give Brad Harvey the win and McCall was in limp mode and he finished down the field. But got into the got into the front, um, so then I started to go into cruise mode, and uh, I just come over the over the hill over there, and I went to select uh, first, and uh, missed it, got neutral, chucked it into the corner, rolled it, in a panic, I, I slammed it back into Probably. gear, got it back into first gear, and then I was over revving it, and then it wouldn't change gear, so I was stuck in first gear for the rest of the race. Well, here is the explanation from the man himself. Here it is in slow motion. Luckily, not too much structural damage, but maybe a problem with the gearbox. Saw Ted Tracy do this at Western Springs. That was the spin and win. Ian Foster did it at Claudelands. He did the rollover and win. And now Tony McCall's repeated the dose here at Collindale Park. Plenty more action still to come here from the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Championships of New Zealand right after the break. Welcome back to round two of the Mickey Thompson New Zealand Stadium Off-Road Championships coming to you from Collindale Park right on the flight path of the Auckland Airport. Coming up, we got the Lucasaurs Challenges and the Superbugs, so a split grid situation here as some much needed water goes onto this brilliantly prepared racetrack we've got at Manukau. So on the front row, it is Holly Russell and Brooklyn Horan. Row number two, it's Dave Maggs and Nick Magnus. And in row number three, it is Steve Hughes and Tyler Castle. Row number four is Jeff Maddox and Harry Hodson. And in row number five, it is Matthew Bishop. Away we go. So first off, it is the Superbugs. And number 751 leading them away. And this is young Holly Russell, just 14 years of age. 
a young lady with a huge future in front of her, and even younger than that is Brooklyn Horan, just 12 years of age and been racing a long, long time. So the second group away as well, and we'll keep an eye out on uh, them for it. There's one of the oldest competitors, C04, that's Steve Hughes, and he's well past 60. You're on board here with Matt Bishop. He's carrying our Mickey Thompson camera, and uh, he is in a battle royal there with uh, Holly Russell, by the look of it, trying to get amongst the uh, front group. Remember, a split grid start, five laps. Lucas Oil brings it to you. It's the Challengers and the Superbugs. Heat number two for them as they crest the tabletop, the Mickey Thompson tabletop, and head into the 180 degree right hand uh, sweeper and then down into the switchbacks. On the move this time is Harry Hodson in the Carter's Tire Service Challenger, so he's one to watch out for. Harry had a very good first round here at Collendale Park, so a couple of good positions might clinch him a championship, because that's what it's all about here, folks. It's about a championship. Number 5-2-1 there is um, Tyler Castle. So he would be the leader now, I would think, in the um, challenger class. As we zoom in here on Brooklyn Horan, just 12 years of age and all the experience in the world. Started out in the Kiwi trucks already up into the buggy classes here in the New Zealand off-road racing scene. The Orange New Zealand Championship about to start in the next couple of weeks. Meantime, we've got action here at Collendale Park. There is the car to service car of uh, Harry Hodgson riding back on board here with Brooklyn Horan. Just shading his uh, face from uh, the dirt. See, at the first round, it was all about the, uh, the dust. Today, it's all about the mud. Kevin Hall and his team at Counties Manukau Off-Road Racing have done an amazing job. A bit more of an aggressive watering program as we go back on board here with Brooklyn Horan. He'd be currently leading the uh, Superbug competition. Both classes sponsored by Lucas Oil. Lucas Oil, of course, no stranger to off-road racing in the United States, no stranger really to any form of motorsport. So up over the top they come once again. It is the 5-2-1 of uh, Tyler Castle in the lead, and a problem here for Harry Hodson. Wow, I'd like to see that on the replay again. He just had a pretty nose-down landing, and he's turned it into the concrete, and that's as far as he's got. Now, we might see a full-course yellow here, at the moment, though, Tyler Castle continues to race on until he sees the yellow flags. They're on board here with Brooklyn Horan leading his class as well. So no sign of the yellow flags just yet. Here it is on the replay. You're watching the Carter's uh, CRC car of Harry Hodson. The impact wasn't quite as bad as I first thought. Now from our high-speed drone. Very much a front-down landing. Maybe some work to be done on the rebound dampening on the rear shocks. Uh, for just a kiss of the concrete, but good enough to halt the progress. Here it is from the front on angle, and that would have been a wild ride for young Harry Hodson. Hopes to have a career in Speedway when he gets just a little bit older. Talking to his dad before the racing started this morning. We go back into the action now. This is Holly Russell, number 751. Holly racing two classes today. You'll see her out in the Kiwi truck as well. So one of the youngest competitors being chased down by one of the oldest. 04 is Steve Hughes. Hughes trying to get around uh, Holly Russell. Can't quite do it for the moment. There is young Holly. As I said, you'll see her out here twice uh, in two different classes today. Big future in front of her. Nick Magnus just in front of them at the moment, number 521. Race leader continues to be Tyler Castle, though, out in the front of this field. And uh, Brooklyn Horan doing a fantastic job, currently running in second overall, I think, and easily leading the Superbuck class. Two classes in one up for decision here as they head down into the switchbacks. You're watching the um, 751 of Holly Russell. There is the race leader, though. And this is Tyler Castle. And now we've got two cars stuck because Matt Bishop has come to a grinding halt in the uh, entrance to the Lucas Oils hairpin. So that may bring out the full course yellow. We might see the safety truck out yet. They're on board here with Brooklyn Horan. He goes past the uh, accident scene. Now chasing down Holly Russell as she heads into the Lucas Oil hairpin at the top end of the circuit. So they've got the Bishop car out of the way, but uh, Harry Hodgson's still stuck up against the concrete, but we don't see the safety car, so we've got a localised yellow, so the racing continues. This is Nick Magnus in the 517, the Magnus Earth Movers car. 
That's one of the challenges. And there is Brooklyn Horan, currently sitting in second overall. There's only one man in front of him, and that is um, Tyler Castle. You're back on board here with Brooklyn Horan. Just 12 years of age, a huge future in front of him. Of course, he is the son of Rana. You get to see Rana out here a little bit later on. Here is the race leader, the overall race leader, though. And uh, this is Tyler Castle, so he sees the chicken flag first. But the next car you'll see will be the shiny gold car of 12-year-old uh, Brooklyn Horan coming through in second place. That's a fantastic effort in the Superbug versus Challenger category. Let's have a look at the overall results. And the first across the line was Tyler Castle. Brooklyn Horan second overall and won the Superbug class. Then it was uh, Nick Magnus, Steve Hughes, Jeff Maddich and Harry Hodgson. Yeah, the race was good. Lots of different conditions. It's quite hard out there now. At the start, it was quite sloppy and muddy and hard to get traction, but now it's real hard. It's good that race it keeps my first position in the championship well that's right it's all about a championship plenty of championship contenders still to come including brooklyn's father and that is rana horror rana's got his hands full on and off the racetrack servicing the family and keeping his own racing interests at heart as well yeah we had a great time the first round it was um quite action-packed new track for everyone a lot of crashes and bashes and a lot of thrills and spills. It was good fun. Another one that provided a lot of thrills and spills in round number one was Mad Mike Wadet in his uh, Mazda Pro line. Yeah, definitely. We're uh, smallest. We got the least power. We're about you know, less than half the most other trucks. We're 1300. 13B rotary running against some of these seven litre V8s and but what this thing lacks in horsepower it makes up for RPM and as long as I'm staying foot flat it's it's got the pace. It's light, it's nimble, does good jumps, I can hit everything flat. So yeah, the same there, checkers are is like checkers or is attitude, same from round one. Well, there's some real racing in heat number one. Four abreast as they come over the main straight jump. And it was Nick Hall, the NZ number one in the Hall Motor Racing uh, Pro Light that got out into the front. In second place, it was uh, Bruce McEwen making his debut. Mad Mike was giving them all a bit of a start, but once he got going, he was right in the mix. So too Malcolm Langley from Fakatani. He had another nose down uh, landing off the main jump and uh, caught the concrete as well. There it is from the end on shot, the Battery Town Thunder Truck of Malcolm Langley passed class one champion or oh, a bit of contact there between mad mike wadet and uh, craig carlisle so pro light on pro light as they head down into the switchbacks up the front plenty of contact as well hawkswood and horan going at it like there's no tomorrow heading over the main straight jump they come once again nick hall still in the lead but i wonder for how much longer because trying to chase him down is rana horan Rana Horan in the supercharged Nissan Thunder Truck and ahead of him and that is the Toyota Pro Light of Nick Hall, the current New Zealand champion. He's been a champion in class five and class eight as well. And he's a champion here because he gets the win. Oh, she was pretty good, mate. Track was mint. Good way to start the day. I'll take the win all day, every day. Nick was in front and he basically held the inside line, which was smart because uh, I was trying to come up there. I should have gone on the outside on the last straight. It's a longer track, a longer arc, and now he won. That's fine. Racing's good. Yeah, yeah, I had to keep it tight. I knew he was there on the last couple of laps, right up my date. Um, look, I just had to keep a tight line. It was a bit slippery out wide, so I knew he'd have to do all the work. Well, that's what happened in heat number one. This is heat number two. The Pro Lights brought to you by Cooper's Tyres and the Thunder Trucks brought to you by Carlton Party Hire. On the front row, Andrew Hawkswood and Nick Hall looking forward to that matchup. Hawkswood certainly won't uh, let you die wondering. He is a real racer's racer. The Mickey Thompson pace truck leaves the racetrack. The green flag comes out and we are racing and they fan right out over the racetrack. Down the inside comes Craig Carlisle. Around the middle comes Andrew Hawkswood and flying around the outside is the Chevy LS one powered Vertex Lubricants truck of Nick Hall. It's Hall into the front and another great start there from Mad Mike Wadet. He's given away plenty of horsepower but man oh man he drives the wheels off this uh, Red Bull Mazda. Does Mad Mike with it. He's already up into third place as our high-speed drone chases them into the switchbacks. On board here with Mad Mike. And you've been forgiven for a little uh, rain spot or two or a mud spot on the lens. That's what you get when you're racing in the dirt. As we go back to the outside shot, this is Nick Hall. Had his first look at the uh, championship course here in round number one. This is the uh, Mickey Thompson 
New Zealand Stadium Off-Road Championship Round 2 and Hall in command of this one is heat number two for the Pro Lights and the Thunder Trucks. Andrew Hawks with the Storage Boss Stamper Ford combination. And man, can this thing rev. A 460 big block Ford. The Pro Lights uh, restricted to 460 cubic inches, carburetors and automatic transmissions. The Thunder Trucks, well, a little bit like the Class 1s, like the Pro 1s, you run what you brung. And there's plenty of horsepower on board there in that beautiful gold truck of Rana Horan as we're on board here with Horan. This truck's been parked up in the shed for the last five or six years as Ran has been concentrating on his uh, very successful New Zealand and international rallying career. But he said when he heard that this event was on, he had to get the truck out of retirement. And at the moment, he's sitting in uh, third place. There is Andrew Hawks would make it fourth place because Mad Mike's still in third. Just look at the loading on the rear tyres of Mad Mike Wadette's Mazda as we go back on board here with Rana Horan working away on the wheel, trying to get a little bit closer to the Mazda. Both trucks going very fast but making their power in different ways. This is Andrew Hawks with the storage boss. Stamper Ford combination. Here's the race leader though. This is Nick Hall. And if anything, he's starting to get away from Hawkswood. Oh, a great landing there from Hawkswood off the main straight jump and into the Lucas Oils hairpin. He's done it just about uh, all in motorsport in New Zealand. He's a past New Zealand rally champion. He's raced sprint cars and now he's racing off-roaders. There is uh, Lee Bishop, the Concrete Treatments uh, Pro Line. Bought this truck in from the United States of America. Lee started back off grid position nine, so he's come through the field as well. Once again, we apologise for the mud on the camera lens from Ron Rana Horan's truck. As he's still trying to chase down Mad Mike Wadette. Wadette's got to keep the pace up through the corners, whereas the V8 trucks, they can sort of have a point and squirt um, technique, and it works just as well. For Mad Mike, the power's got to be on all the time and the pass is made. And I just wonder if there's a problem for Mad Mike that it would be too easy for Horan for me as he comes over the pitch straight jump and lines up the uh, front straight once again. You're on board here with Craig Carlisle. The Ministry of Transport logo there. And there is a stricken Mad Mike with it. I thought there might have been a mechanical issue and that's exactly what has happened. So with the demise of Mad Mike Wadette, that means Craig Carlisle's moved up a spot as well. Race leader continues to be Nick Hall, Andrew Hawkswood in second place, and then it is Rana Horan. This is this battle we've been watching. This is fourth and fifth on your screen at the moment. It's Carlisle in the front. Right in behind him, it would be uh, the um, Bishop car, the concrete treatments car of uh, Lee Bishop. As we're back on board here with Carlisle. These guys having their own little race. This is Bruce McEwen. Another one that's having his first taste of the racetrack here at um, Collendale Park. As we go back into this man currently sitting in fourth place, Carl Carlos Finest, Craig Carlisle. He was over the moon when we said, would he like to carry an onboard camera? So we're getting great shots, getting great shots of this bloke as well, but he's all out on his own. And that is Nick Hall, the son of Kevin. Kevin, one of the biggest movers and shakers in this fine event. The Mickey Thompson New Zealand Stadium Off-Road Championship. Hall's got this one by the tail at the moment. The Vertex Lubricants Pro Light. Built here in New Zealand. Hall Motor Racing uh, built this car. Two American specifications, as I said, restricted to 460 cubic inch engines. This one is an LS1 Chevy. Automatic transmission in all of the Pro Light trucks. And the same suspension uh, travel as well. 14 inches in the rear, 12 in the front. So quite restricted, but they still do put on a fantastic show. And that's exactly what Nick Hall is doing at the moment. He leads this one quite comfortably. Yellow flags being shown locally. That's for the Mazda of Mad Mike Wadet. Pitch straight jump, no problem at all for Nick Hall. Though, as he rockets down the front straight now and uh, into the um, Mickey Thompson dipper and the concrete treatment start finish line. So Nick Hall will make it two from two here at Manukau. In second place, it will be Andrew Hawkswood. And in third place, it will be the first of the Thunder Trucks. And that is Rana Horan. So Nick Hall gets another win. Hawkswood is second. Craig Carlisle third in the Pro Trucks. And then it's Bruce McEwen. Rana Horan too good for Lee Bishop in the Thunder Truck. Still to come, the Pro Buggies here at Collendale Park. And that's right after the break. Welcome back to the Mickey Thompson New Zealand Stadium Off-Road Championship. This is round two coming to you from Collendale Park, and this is a class a lot of people have been looking forward to. This is the NZ Pro Buggies. On the front row, it's Bo Patchett and Keegan Russell. Row number two, Jason Midgley and Vincent Borman. In row number three, it's Levi Nien and Coat Nicklin. We're not going to get right through them. A big field of NZ Pro Buggies. 
These uh, cars restricted to 1,640cc engines. No superchargers or turbochargers allowed, but it doesn't mean the action will be any less. It's the 351 that's gone out to an early lead, and that's Bo Patchett. You're riding here with Mike Gibson. Now, he uh, was second in heat number one, and his nemesis, you see the bright green car back in the field at the moment. He'll come from well down the grid, and that is uh, the man from Taranaki, and that is Brendan Old. So watch for Old to come through the field. Meantime, we've got a change at the front, and it's the 324, and that's Jason Midgley in the Mobile One uh, Midgley Transport uh, car. There he is out in the front as they head down into the switchback. So uh, Patchett goes back into second. You're on board here with uh, Mike Gibson. He's already up into fourth place. And uh, Gibson started out of grid position uh, number uh, seven. So he's uh, made a lot of work in the early going. Remember the heat races, five laps here. NZ bring it to you. Our uh, high-speed drone just zooming in on the, the competition. And there is part of the competition. I mentioned it before. Mike Gibson, the go-sell number 377, trying to move up into third place there. Oh, another front down landing for Midgley, and he slams the concrete hard, and the Mobile One car is going no further. It'll be interesting to see how the officials play this. Will we see a full course yellow, or will we see just localised yellows? So it means that the 351 and Patchett's gone back into the front. These guys aren't aware yet of what's going on in the officials' mind. They're still racing, and racing for position. So that means Gibson's now slotted up into second as the drone chases them as they head up to the Mickey Thompson tabletop once again. Gibson looking for the running room on Patchett. A little bit of contact as they go into the right-hander. You're on board here with uh, Mike Gibson. So far, just a localised yellow for the stricken Jason Midgley as we zoom in now on the new race leader. And this is Gibson. Working his way over the pit straight jump, he comes now and he's got a little bit of, of uh, daylight between himself and uh, Bo Padgett in second place. The Go Cell Refrigeration number 377. So the full course yellow sign comes out and you see the Mickey Thompson pace truck coming out onto the circuit as well. Well, that was the last thing that Mike Gibson wanted to see because I think he thought that he had this one wrapped up. He was second in heat number one. This is heat number two. Officials just talking to Jason Midgley to see that he's A-OK. -okay. Now, it'll be interesting to see what the officials do here, whether they'll leave the car there or they will try and salvage it. At the moment, we're under a full course yellow. And this is the reason why you're riding with Mike Gibson here. Oh, I don't know if there was any contact there between himself and Midgley, but the result was Midgley hard into the concrete. Have a look at this. Just turns hard left. And actually, Gibson was lucky not to be involved in that. Rips the left front off it, so he's going nowhere. Here's another replay. This is a side-on shot and straight into the wall. And that was quite an impact there for Jason Midgley. Well, the decision is that we are about to go racing once again. You're on board here with Mike Gibson. He's back in second place. So we go back to the last fully recorded lap. And that means that Bo Patchett in the front for the moment. But diving down the inside of them as they come out of the Lucas Oil's hairpin is the 377. But he can't make it stick as they go over the tabletop. Back on board here with Mike Gibson. This time he does go down the inside. Can he hold out Patchett this time round side by side as they head down into the switchbacks? It's the 377 on the outside. It's Patchett on the inside. You're back on board here with Gibson. Here is the uh, the run coming from Patchett as once again they go over the tabletop, head down into this 180 degree sweeper and down into the switchbacks. This is a close run thing at the moment. Not much action coming from the triple three of Brendan Old for the moment. He won hit number one, but now he's slowly getting back into his work and getting through this field. And just in behind him, it's the 310. And that is Connor Nicklin came from grid position six. So he is getting his way to the front as well 377 Mike Gibson is the new race leader as they crest the concrete treatment stepper the Mickey Thompson jump and head down into the Lucas Oil's hairpin once again in second place it's Patchett and in third place now it looks like Levi Nairn in the second of the crab racing uh, cars the 308 and in behind him it would be um, Rick Schiaroni by the look of it and Rick is in the 397. So three abreast as they head down into the switchbacks once again. This is the battle for second, third, fourth and fifth now. Because uh, coming into this one as well is the 362 and that's Dan Fromans. 351, Padgett's got all he can handle at the moment from Levi Nairn. That's the battle for the Miners out in the front. Still Mike Gibson in the 377. 
Our high-speed drone having a bit of a hard job trying to keep up with these uh, pro buggies brought to you by NZ. And now we finally see some action from Brendan Ohl. The man from Taranaki has finally decided to uh, stop messing around or maybe he's found top gear in his pro buggy because he is in the mix now well and truly. There is Nen, and right in behind him now it will be the triple three, and that's the first heat winner, and that is Brendan Old from Taranaki. So he's in this now, and then we go back to the 395, and that would be Vincent Borman. So a race of changing fortunes. Out in the front, it is Mike Gibson. Gibson and Old battled long and hard in heat number one. At the moment, it is Gibson out in the front, and he's clearly in the lead. About to go into second place. Oh, and some contact there between Brendan Old and uh, Bo Patchett by the look of it. No harm, no foul. They both continue as they head down into the switchbacks. Still near in behind them. Then we would go back to uh, Fromings has dropped a spot uh, by my eyes, and that means Vincent Boorman has come up one as well. The drone trying to chase down our new second placement as they come over the pitch straight jump and head down the front straight here once again at Collindale Park. It's round two of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Championship. And this is an absolute beauty. NZ bring it to you. It's the Pro Buggies, essentially the Class 3 cars in the O-Ran scheme of things. And what a race we are seeing here. Number 310, all in this as well. This is Conor Nicklin. He started to move through the field. Nian still leading that little bunch. Out in the front, remember, the 377 of Gibson. You could put a blanket over the next five, though. There is the race leader, and he's increased the lead as he comes out of the 180-degree sweeper and heads down into the switchback. You're taking the Mickey Thompson pictures, riding with the 377 of Mike Gibson. He's going to turn the tables on Brendan Old. These two battled long and hard in heat number one. The result was completely the opposite of what we see at the moment. Over the pit jump, he comes once again. The go cell 377. Gibson's going to win this, I think and he's going to win it by the proverbial country mile. Checkered flag comes out, and it is Gibson that gets there. In second place, it will be the triple three of Brendan Old. There he is, but he's a long way back. And then we'd go back to the number 310, and that is Colin Nicklin. Right in behind him, it was Levi Nairn, as close as you like in the NZ Pro Buggies. So official results see Mike Gibson get the win from Brendan Old. Third place is Colin Nicklin, and then it's fourth is uh, Levi Nairn. Fifth place goes to Bo Padgett, and in sixth, it's Rick Schiaroni. Plenty more action to come from the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Championship right after the break. Welcome back to the Mickey Thompson New Zealand Stadium Off-Road Championships. Coming to you from Collindale Park, we change tack a bit as we get into the Polaris Ultra 4 Turbo Class. And it is uh, Danem Templeman and his dad, Dave, on the front row. Second row is Aaron Rodgers and uh, Grant Sleeman. Row number three, Rick Field and Joel Giddy. Watch for Giddy in the 16. But the man you've got to keep a real eye on is the man that will start from uh, toward the back, coming out of grid position number eight, and that is Carl Reutemann in the 22. Away they go, and it's the 93 of Danem Templeman out in the front, in front of uh, Dad for the moment. But already it looks like it's Giddy that's moved through into second place. So it's a uh, k &M out in the front in the form of uh, Danem Templeman, another man that's done just about every form of motor racing in New Zealand, from Formula Fords to off-roading to drifting to saloon car racing. Danem has done it all with the help of his dad. And great to see that his dad's in the field. And we talk of Dave Templeman in the DDT S91. The man, as I said, to watch for, though, is the 22. Making short work of this field is uh, Carl Reutemann in the ENH Motors 22. This is what's happening at the front of the field, though. It is Danem Templeman in the S93. The pace pulls Can-Am, leading the Yamaha of Joel Giddy for the moment. Giddy getting a little bit closer as they head down the front straight once again, heading for the Mickey Thompson Dipper and the Concrete Treatments finish line jump side by side as they go into the Lucas Oil hairpin. Who's going to get to the break first? Down the inside comes Giddy. Does he get the spot? Well, they say Rubbin's racing and there's plenty of Rubbin and off-roaders and Joel Giddy goes into the front. Templeman goes back into second spot. They've still got a healthy advantage over third place at the moment. The last time we looked, I think it was that man, and that was Carl Reutemann in the 22, and there he is, disappearing down the inside of Templeman. So he goes from third to second as they head down into the switchbacks. Five laps for the heats here at Manukau, the Polaris-sponsored Ultra 4 Turbos. 
some of these uh, little side-by-sides running in excess of 900 horsepower. They are fine fettled and heavily breathed on, none more so than the NH Motors uh, Yamaha of Carl Reutemann. Another one doing double duty today. You'll see him out here in this class, the um, Ultra 4 Turbo. And you also see him in the Yamaha class as well. This is Dave Templeman. And uh, right in behind Dave, it would be uh, Brian Ritkus by the look of it in the 43. There's the S97. And that is Grant Sleeman. So he would currently be uh, sitting in fifth or sixth place by the look of it. So nothing in it in the minors and nothing in it at the front of the field as well. So this battle is uh, Dave Templeman. Then we go back to Grant Sleeman. That's Sleeman on your screen, S97, as they make their way up towards the Mickey Thompson tabletop. We zoom in on Sleeman as they crest the tabletop and head into this 180 degree turn. The inside line's the smoothest, outside's a little bit soft. So all of the uh, side-by-sides hugging the inside line. So Dave Templeman just getting away from uh, Sleeman for the moment. S43 there is Brian Rutgers, so he'd be currently back in fifth place by the look of it, as uh, the drone closes in on uh, Grant Sleeman. Just ahead of him, it is Dave Templeman in the 91, but ahead of them, it is the 16 of Joel Giddy and the 22 of Carl Reutemann. That would be the order as over the finish line jump they come, and Sleeman hasn't really got an answer for the veteran in this one, brought to you by Polaris. It's the Ultra 4 Turbos, and we zoom in on uh, the 91 of Dave Templeman. This is the 22 of Carl Reutemann, and he hasn't got an answer for Joel Giddy. So Giddy continues to lead it as he comes off the Mickey Thompson tabletop and into the big sweeper and heads down into the switchbacks once again as the laps wind down here. The 91 of Dave Templeman currently sitting in uh, third place. Fourth place is um, Grant Sleeman. This is the race leader, though. This is the 16. And this is Joel Giddy, and is Joel Giddy going to get one over his Yamaha teammate in Carl Reutemann? Over the main straight jump they come, and Reutemann hasn't got an answer. That's Reutemann in the back of the shot. We're on to the last lap. Has the ENH uh, Motors sponsored Carl Reutemann got anything for Joel Giddy? Is Giddy going to get his win here in the Polaris sponsors Ultra 4 Turbo? 22 of Reutemann. He's been pretty near unbeatable. That was the way in round number one. This is round number two of the Mickey Thompson New Zealand Stadium Off-Road Championship. And Joel Giddy's got his measure into the switchbacks for the last time. Yamaha on Yamaha. It's a Can-Am through in third place. And that is Dave Templeman. But this is where the interest is at the moment. Giddy's just got to be tidy. He's got to forget about the fact that on his tail is one of the fastest uh, Yamaha pilots in the country in the form of Carl Reutemann. Is he going to be able to hold on? There is Reutemann. Reutemann. Reutemann's getting a little bit closer, but remember, they're running to the flag. Over the pit jump they come. The 16 of Giddy, he's going to do this. He's only got one short straight to go, and into the Mickey Thompson and Concrete Improvement Stipper they come, and Giddy gets the win, and there's nothing Reutemann can do about it, so he will come across the line in second place. In third place, it's the veteran, that's Dave Templeman. Then we go back to Grant Sleeman. Behind him, it is the 43 of Brian Rutgers, and then it is Rick Field. Preparation in the pits for this next round of racing in the Mad Mike Wadette pits. Lincoln Wadette is the man getting prepared by his very proud dad. Yeah, leading points in his class to put him in with adults again, running with the uh, um, use the side by side. So side by side's a thousand cc. He's a YZF450 motor, so he's down a little bit. The power to weight ratio is probably pretty similar. Um, he's only rear wheel drive against the guys that are four wheel drive. But he's having a blast. They start him 30 meters off the back and. Um, he just tries to pick off as many as he can, but he's, he's smiling, it's the main thing. So this is the Yamaha sponsored Ultra 4 and at the back of the field will be the BSL Racing Super 450 Semi Main with Lincoln Wadette and Paul Hackett. On the front row, Aaron Stone and Phil Johnson. Row 2, Shane McWatt. Watch for him. He was a mover and shaker in the earlier going. This is a semi-main, so instead of five laps, it is seven laps, so a little bit more extra time for the likes of... Uh, 22, and that is Carl Reutemann to come from the back of the field to the front. It is Aaron Stone that leads them into the Lucas Oils hairpin for the first of seven times, remember. In second place, Phil Jackson, so pretty much going as per grid position. So it's still Stone leading as the field closes up as they head down into the sweeper once again. This is at the back of the field. This is young Lincoln with dead. Remember, he's in a YZ450 Yamaha-powered truck. 
So he's in the super modified class brought to you by BSL. And he is certainly paying the horsepower. But look at the way he's cutting through the back markers here. So uh, he is another young man in one heck of a hurry, just a teenager. A huge future in front of him. This guy, well, his future is just unfolding for every event he goes to. This is Carl Reutemann. He is the best thing going in the Yamaha side-by-side. -side. But again, he's come from a fair way down through the field. So he's got his work cut out for him. Came from grid position number seven. Just working away there on Dan Slater at the moment. Back on board here with Reutemann taking the Mickey Thompson on board shots. As uh, over the main straight jump they come, fanned right out across the racetrack. There is the 22. Just in behind him now is the 16 of Dan Slater. This is a battle for second and third. Out in the front it is uh, Shane McWatt in the U31, and he's got quite a lead as they head down into the sweeper once again. You're back on board here with Reutemann. There is McWatt just up ahead of him. Stone goes back into third place now. And in fourth, it'll be the U16, and that is Dan Slater as they head down into the switchbacks. Oh, and Slater's just got a little bit of contact. Maybe he cut it just a little bit too fine, and that's going to cost him a position, maybe two, as the leaders are up in the Mickey Thompson tabletop. So uh, the field starting to stretch out a little bit there. The 83 with Scott Munro, he's starting to make some progress. So too is young Lincoln were dead in the, the 321, giving away a huge amount of horsepower to uh, the 88 of Mike Small. In fact, a real battle going on here with Small and Lincoln were dead as they head towards the pit straight jump and out onto the front straight here at uh, Collendale Park. The U31 is his moment in the sun about to come to an end because here comes the 22 of Reutemann. For the moment, it's McWatt, and McWatt doing everything he can to make that uh, little side-by-side -side Yamaha just as wide as wide as possible. But is he going to be able to thwart the challenge from uh, Carl Reutemann? Lincoln Wadette's past the 88 of Mike Small. That's the Pyra Towing Services Yamaha. So he moves up a spot as well. You're on board here with young Lincoln. Don't know who's more proud, Lincoln of his efforts or Dad uh, Mad Mike of Lincoln's efforts. As back on board with Reutemann, and he still hasn't found a way around the 31 of Shane McWatt. Oh, and McWatt gets it all wrong on his own. He spins himself around as he comes toward the pit straight jump, and that allows Reutemann to get the front running position once again. Well, he came from grid position number seven, and he's in the front now, and the laps are running down. It's the 22, the e h Motors, Carl Reutemann. You ride with him here as he comes out of the Lucas Oil hairpin and up over the Mickey Thompson tabletop. Plenty of air for the Yamaha. Back to the rear of the field. Remember, two classes up for decision here. The, um, the Yamaha... Ultra 4s and the BSL Super 450 Modifieds. And leading the Super Modifieds at the moment is Lincoln Wadette. Leading the Yamaha sponsors uh, Ultra is Carl Reutemann. Great little scrap going on for the miners there and right in the thick of it is Scott Munro. And also a recovering Dan Slater. So keep an eye on their progress. Meantime, Reutemann's waved goodbye to the rest of the field. 31 still through in second, that's Shane McWatt. And we go back to this battle between Slater and also the 83 of Munro. This is the battle we concentrate on at the moment. You could throw a pretty big sized blanket over the next four and make it five uh, side by sides as they head down toward the last lap here at uh, Collendale Park. This is round number two of the Mickey Thompson New Zealand Stadium Off-Road Racing Championship. Championship plates will be doled out at the end of the day and one looks to be going the way of Carl Reutemann for sure. Look at this battle, still four of the minute together. Back on board here with the race leader though, nothing but clear track in front of Carl Reutemann as he works his way into the switchbacks, already put a bit of daylight between himself and second place. The son of Mad Mike Wadette, Lincoln Wadette, in his little uh, Red Bull sponsored uh, modified 450 Kiwi truck, doing a pretty good job, but no one doing a better job than this man. Already starting to wave to the crowd, the NH Motors sponsored Carl Reutemann, heading to another win here at round number two of the Mickey Thompson Stadium Championship. Checkered flag comes out, Reutemann gets the job done. In second place, it should be uh, the 83 of Scott Munro, and then behind him, it should be uh, Boston Morgan Horan, that name again in the results. Checkered flag, you can put a blanket over the next five 
and Lincoln Wadette wins the modified 450 class unchallenged and far from the back. Overall results see Carl Reutemann take another win from Munro, from Morgan Horan, from Tony Terrell, from Mike Small and Wayne Spicer and Lincoln Wadette unchallenged in the BSL modified 450s. Yeah, so it's just fun to be out there versing on white seats like twice the size of my car and yeah, so also passing a couple of dudes at the start as well. Managed to catch up to a couple of them during the race but yeah, just good racing for everyone. I'd just like to thank my team so much for prepping the car and getting it ready for the event. One of the standout competitors at the Collendale Park was also one of the smallest and the youngest. 14-year-old Holly Russell raced two classes over the two rounds and absolutely dominated in her 2NZ modified truck. She also caught the eye of Rolf Wilson and his team from Lucas Oil. Still only a teenager, Holly is one to watch for and with the help of Lucas Oil as her major sponsor, she is well on her way to stardom. So we're into semi-main territory here at the Mickey Thompson Stadium uh, New Zealand uh, Off-Road Championships. On the front row in the pro buggies, it is Bo Patchett and uh, Connor Nicklin. Row number two, it is Dan Frummings and uh, Levi Nien. Row number three, Brendan Old and Mike Gibson. And in row number four, it's Vince Vorman and Keegan Russell. Not going to get right through this big field. So this is the semi-main. So this is seven laps as opposed to the five they've done in the heats. And once again, it is Bo Patchett that goes into the front as they come out of the Lucas Oil's hairpin and head towards the Mickey Thompson tabletop for the first of seven times. Keep an eye on the 377. That's Mike Gibson, heat winner in heat number two, second in heat number one, and the man to his outside, the triple three, that is Brendan Old out of Taranaki. He was the heat one winner and second in heat number two. So they are the class of this field, but don't discount some of the others, the likes of number 308, and that is Levi Nairn. So Patchett continues to lead it. Fromming's making his presence felt as well. Now the big move coming from Brendan Old down the inside of Nairn to move up a spot here. Back on board here with Mike Gibson, and he is tracing his nemesis in the form of Old. 351, though, is going to lead it down to complete one of seven. And that is Bo Patchett. Yes, he came from the front row, but he stayed there. This is Dan Frommings in second place for the moment. Up and over the big jump they come. Plenty of elevation for Patchett. Plenty of elevation too for the next bunch. Number 10 out there is the only Class 10 buggy in the field, and that is Ed Heisted. And he's got a bit of work to do to catch up with his essential Class 3 cars, the Pro Buggies. Restricted to 640 cc's, no superchargers or turbocharging allowed, but plenty of other modifications allowed in these cars. You're on board once again with Gibson, and it's old that's got up ahead of him as we chase them down with the drone. Oh, and a little bit of contact between the adversaries as they head up over and into the switchbacks once again. Dan Frommings is going to be in this whether he wants to or not. In fact, he split Gibson and Old as they head down to the back of the course. The drone struggling to catch up with these fast, fast cars. All space frame construction. Shock absorbers are free. Suspension travel is free as we zoom in on Connor Nicklin. Starting to make his way toward the front of the field. There is the 377 of Gibson. We ride on board with him at the moment. Just in front of him, it looked like it was um, Keegan Russell in the Richard Crabb owned uh, workshop sponsored number 357. So watch for Russell as well. He's the young charger on the way up. Meantime, out in the front, just a puff of blue smoke coming from uh, Bo Patchett will keep an eye on that. Blue means oil normally. Hopefully the engine hasn't cried enough in Patchett's car because he's leading it for the moment. Working his way around the 310 of Connor Nicklin goes the triple three of Brendan Old. Can't quite get the pass done though. So no harm, no foul, and we've got a new race leader, and it is Connor Nicklin now. He's got up ahead of Bo Patchett. Another puff of smoke from the Patchett car as we're back on board here with Mike Gibson, just trying to round up Dan Fromings in the 362. There is Keegan Russell in Richard Crabb's car. Richard doing a, a whole lot of duty in the pits, but decided wasn't fit enough to race as uh, the front runners come up and over the top once again. Keep an eye on the triple three. He's the threat in this one. There's no doubt about it. He's Taranaki hard is Brendan Old, and he currently sits in second place. 
Three one zero. Now the race leader. This is Connor Nickel. Have we lost Patchett? Was the smoke too much? No, there he is at the back of the shot, still comfortably in third place. The laps wind down. The semi main brought to you by NZ. It's the Pro Buggies. Up and over the top of the Mickey Thompson tabletop they come. And Nicklin just seems to have the measure of old for the moment. They get a little bit closer as they head down now into the switchbacks. This is where it becomes challenging. A driver's track rather than a horsepower track. And, well, he's got both of them. Brendan Old is a very experienced driver, and that car is fast as well. He tries to go around the long way of Connor Nicklin. Is it going to work for him? He'll straighten up and head towards the Mickey Thompson jump and the concrete treatment stepper. They're side by side as they come back down to land and into the Lucas Oils hairpin, and there's nothing in this. This is a great performance coming from Connor Nicklin. He holds on to the front running. He'll have I spoken too soon. Nearly a bit of contact, wheel on wheel action as Brendan Old gets into the front as they head down into the switchbacks once again. So he just starts to pull away a little bit from Nicklin. Nicklin did all he could and held him out for as long as he could as well. But right now it is Brendan Old. They say the cream rises to the top and that's what we see here with Old. He's uh, had a mixture of seconds and firsts in the previous heats. This is the semi-main, though. There's his nemesis. We'll be right on board here with Matt Gibson. Apologise once again for the mud on the uh, onboard camera. Nothing you can do about it when you're racing on the dirt. This is the race leader. Over the pit jump, he comes once more, and you'll see that the advantage has grown. Brendan Old has put Colin Nicklin well into the shade here as he hits the main straight jump once again. Plenty of elevation. Checkered flag comes out, and the semi-main goes to Brendan Old. Old. In second place, it would be Nicklin by the look of it. And maybe Mike Gibson got up to be third or fourth. In fact, he was fourth. So it was Bo Patchett's held on for third place. Then we went back to Gibson. Keegan Russell was in fifth. And then it was Dan Frimmings, Levi Nairn, Vincent Boerman rounding out the uh, miners. Coming up, we've got the Pro Lights and the Thunder Trucks. But sadly for Mad Mike Wadette, he'll be a passenger because he broke the axle in heat number two in the Pro Lights, brought to you by Cooper's Tyres. And uh, he will be watching with interest from the sidelines. So the one, two, three abandoned in the pits. And that means that grid position number one will be vacant here as we get set to turn him loose for the semi-main. On row number one, it will be Bruce McEwen all on his own. So that's going to play into the hands of Andrew Hawkswood. So he'll have a clear run to the flag as he gets set to turn him loose in the Cooper Tyres Pro Lights. Carlton Party Hire Thunder Trucks semi-main. Seven laps. So watch from the back of the field, that is Rana Horan, but out on the front, it is Bruce McEwen in the Drill Force Pro Light, and right around the outside of him, or trying to get around the outside of him, is the Wild Man, and that is Andrew Hawkswood in the big block Ford powered uh, storage Bosch Pro Light as well. And already Horan has got up in front of Lee Bishop by the look of it, and moved up a spot. Hawkswood in the front now. Oh, and a bit of contact there. Well, a little bit more than a bit of contact between Craig Carlisle and Bruce McEwen. Well, they say Robin's racing. Maybe that was taking it to the nth degree as they head up towards the um, tabletop once again. It is Hawkswood in the front, but he's being chased down here by Rana Horan. Didn't take Horan long to get through the field and move through into second place. Now, these two had a ding-dong battle in heat number one. You're on board here with Rana Horan, the supercharged uh, V8 Nissan. Ahead of him, it is the Ford, the storage boss stamper of Andrew Hawkswood. Pretty new to off-roading, although he did cart a second-place finish at uh, one of the Telpo 1000s a few years ago. But not new to motorsport in general, past New Zealand rally champion, ex-sprint car racer from uh, Western Springs a few seasons ago now, and of course uh, very successful as a promoter with the Battle of Jack's Ridge, uh, where he is still on a bit of a high. Here is Lee Bishop from uh, the Concrete Treatments uh, Pro Light. You're riding with him here. Just up ahead of him it is Bruce McEwen. So this is a battle for, uh, I think it's probably fourth and fifth place, and there's an issue, mechanical issue by the sound of that, for Lee Bishop. That ain't going too much further, I wouldn't think. That is a very scary sound. Meantime, at the front of the field, Hawkswood's got back into the lead, or held on to the lead, as they work their way into the switchbacks once again. The drone trying to catch up with Rana Horan. Just up ahead of him, it is um, Andrew Hawkswood. Spanky to his friends. Down onto the front straight, they'll come over the pit straight, they go. Horan gets a little bit closer. I would say that Horan's a little bit better, maybe in the uh, the switchback section. This is Nick Hall. Now, Nick Hall is a past New Zealand number. In fact, he's the current New Zealand number one. 
and at the moment he'd be sitting in third place. There is Craig Carlisle through in fourth. Bought this car in from the United States of America. This one's a home-built one. Uh, Nick Hall, past Class 5 and Class 8 champion. He was the Thunder Trucks champion at one stage. Now he is the Pro Lights champion of New Zealand. Absolutely has loved his time here at the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Championship. Had a great round number one and an equally good round number two. So he'll be up there when they dole out the championship plaques. Who will it be in this battle, though? Rana Horan's got a little bit more they can handle here with Andrew Hawkswood. They draw level side by side as they run uphill for a little while. It's Horan on the inside in the Thunder Truck brought to you by Carlton Party Hire. Outside of him, it is the um, Cooper Tyre sponsored pro line of Andrew Hawkswood. And listen to the big forward rev. It's right on the limiter from the time he lands from the pit jump to the time he lands from the main straight jump. And a big tail down landing there from Andrew Hawkswood. I've said it before. You're never going to die wondering with Hawkswood. He's going to give it 110% every single time. And that's what we're seeing here, the semi-main. It's seven laps, not five. So it's a physical test as much as anything else. And you can see from the Mickey Thompson onboard shots just how hard Rana Horan is working to keep the flying Hawkswood in sight. Brilliant racing. They've saved it till the very last before the big features here at Collendale Park. It's Hawkswood in the front. The storage boss Ford versus the Nissan of Rana Horan. Horan down the inside. Can he make the pass stick this time? Hawkswood comes straight back at him there side by side, door handle the door handle as they head down into the left hander. Who's going to give first? Will it be Horan or will it be Hawkswood? Side by side over the pit jump. There is absolutely nothing in it. Horan goes into the front and the white flag comes out. So he's picked the perfect time to pass. Has Hawkswood got an answer? Over the jump he goes, chased by a high speed drone. Old George has had his work cut out this time at uh, Manukau because of course it was the dust that bothered him last time and now it's the sheer speed and there's none quicker than Rana Horan. And you're back on board with him here, the Mickey Thompson uh, onboard camera. In behind him now is Andrew Hawkswood. Is he going to be able to do anything on this last lap into the switchbacks they go? Hawkswood gets a little bit closer. Horan looks to be a little bit better in this part of the racetrack. This is a driver's side of thing. I think he may have the edge in the horsepower, but he's certainly got the edge in the suspension package in the Thunder Truck. Back on board with the man that's about to win the semi-main here. Thunder Trucks brought to you by Carlton Party Hire. The Pro Lights brought to you by Cooper's Tyres. There's only a straightaway to go, and Rana Horan is going to complete his points run in the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off Road New Zealand Championships Round Two. It's the 899. It's going to carry the day. Across the line he goes, easing up, and Rana Horan gets the win with bodywork flying. Andrew Hawkswood will be second, and in third place it will be the NZ1 of Nick Hall. So overall results tell you that Andrew Hawkswood gets the pro-light win, but overall it is Rana Horan taking the day in the semi-main. So a little bit of a discussion going on in the pits between Rana Horan and a pretty happy Andrew Hawkswood. That no, was great, yeah, good fun, good fun trying to hold Rana out, but there was a big bump on the, on the inside of one of the corners there. I had to keep going wide to miss the bump, and Rana had better, you know, got better suspension travel and could get his nose in every time, and I held him out, held him out. And then he got me, so no, it was good, good fun race. Yeah, it was a good race this one with Hawkswood, and he was going for it. We were going for it, so it was just good fun. I had my sort of advantages over the back, not up the main straight, so that's where I ended up getting them, but it was, I tried three times before that. It was good fun. Well, the big crowd certainly loved that, and so did the man spectating, Mad Mike Wadette, and this is the reason why. So we broke the hub, we uh, bent the brake rotor, um, calipers broken, it was a uh, yeah, absolute mess. So BNF for myself, but Link's been out there crushing it with the side-by-sides. Um, but yeah, just wicked to have such an amazing venue. We're 20 minutes from Auckland CBD, um, and just the camaraderie between all the teams, the buggies, the trucks, um, just epic, yeah. Pumped to be involved and can't wait for the next one. Six round championship, hopefully. Bring it on, Tony, six round championship. Well, folks, here are the championship winners over the two rounds for the Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road New Zealand Championships 2021. Congratulations to all our winners. And you've seen a glimpse into the future. This is what the future of off-road racing looks like. Huge thank you to Kevin Hall and Tony McCall and the County's Manukau Off-Road Racing Club. Don't forget to be here when we do it all again next season.